My coverage of CES 2018 from Las Vegas, Nevada is brought to you by Cooler Master, Enermax, OCZ Toshiba, and Deepcool. All right, guys, I'm over at EVGA now, and they have, uh, they're bored, I'll be honest. They're bored, they don't have any graphics cards, so uh, let's see what they've come up with. All right, let's start out with this device right below me. This is the SC15, which is a laptop you probably have seen before because it's already an existing EVGA product. However, look at that, Max-Q. Max-Q is, of course, certification that you get from NVIDIA that says your gaming laptop is super awesome, uh, which means that it can be within, within a certain uh, amount of noise generation threshold, a certain size, and a certain level of power. So you gotta have a GTX 1070 or 1080 in there for that. And for the SC15, it has now been updated with a GTX 1070. Other than that, it's pretty much the same design, aluminum chassis, uh, very powerful, system that they have going on in there and they're just doing a little Wolfenstein demo with that. It's also got the nice brushed aluminum top cover there as well. Uh, it's a really nice laptop so if anyone's looking for a thin, portable and actually good to game on uh, laptop, check out the SC15 Max-Q. Now when I said EVGA is bored, this is, this is kind of what I meant. Look, look what they've come up with here. In the interim between graphics card launch, launches for NVIDIA, they have this color-coded sets of plastic pieces, which are plastic, and uh, basically you can use these with a closed-loop cooler, since EVGA does make those, and you can use it to cable manage your tubes. So there, there's an example of a few of these installed, and uh, just allows you to more precision route your tubing to, you know, leave more open space, or perhaps just give yourself a more colorful looking interior of your case, since obviously they are available in a wide variety of colors. We're expecting these to launch in the second quarter of 2018, so fairly soon. No word on pricing, and they don't actually have an official name for these yet either, so if you guys have any good ideas for what uh, EVGA should call these little things, then leave a comment in the comment section down below and let them know what you think. Uh, they can be used individually, one at a time. They're 90 degree bins, or you can use this little piece in the middle to sort of snap a couple of, t of them together. So if you have two tubes that would naturally be next to each other, um, you, can, you can pair them up and make them a couple for life. Here's the EVGA Z10, uh, which is a mechanical gaming keyboard. It's got Cherry MX brown switches, and if it looks familiar, that's because we first talked about this one year ago at CES 2017. And we also showed it at Computex 2017. But now it's actually just about the finalized version ready for launch. So it comes with a detachable wrist dress, which uh, slides on via the front, just, just like I did. Uh, look, I even did that with one hand. That's always impressive. Uh, beyond that, you've got a full 10 key, full keyboard layout. Uh, there's a couple of macro keys over on the left side that you can assign. It does have a button up there for gaming that will disable the Windows button so you don't actually hit that while you're playing. Speaking of which, the Windows button's on the right side. Not over here, they've got a function button over there, so you can access some additional function controls in there. Uh, on the top right, you've got some media controls, there's a volume and a dimmer slider at the top right and the top left, respectively. And then right there at the dead center is a little display, uh, LED readout display, and this will actually allow you to display stuff from EVGA's Precision X utility. So if you're playing a video game and you don't necessarily want to use the on-screen overlay in order to main monitor stuff like your GPU temperature or your frame rate or that kind of thing, uh, you can just set up via Precision X and display that information down on a little screen and get more info about how your system is performing as you are playing games. There's also a EVGA utility, a bit of software that they have been developing for this, and that will allow you to configure macros as well as uh, actually switch around some keystrokes and that kind of thing. You can add it, repeat delay, and uh, set up the on-screen display to be one way or another, uh, as well as configuring the dimmer and volume sliders uh, so you can manipulate those as well. Finally, a, really, a feature that I really like about this keyboard is it has uh, pass-through USB ports, in fact, two of them, one on the left side and one on the right side. And uh, that's, just, that's just a feature that I really like to have on a keyboard. So here it is, the Z10. And in case you're wondering, this is actually going to launch this year in Q1. So within the next couple months, we should expect it. And uh, I asked for a price. It's not finalized, so it might change. But we're looking at probably in the 100 to $120 range. Now just to point out, EVGA does have some graphics cards here. The Kingpin Hydro Copper, the Kingpin 1080 Ti. Really nice graphics cards, but let's be honest, they've been out for a while. So you guys are probably already familiar with those. They do have a couple new power supplies, though. Uh, more practically speaking, here's the 1000PQ. 
Uh, this is an 80 plus platinum rated power supply, 1000 watts, and it's going to be a little bit more affordable than their existing platinum series of power supplies. That is mainly due to the fact that they've gone with the partially modular design, so it does have a couple fixed cables in your 24 pin uh, motherboard power connector. And that allows them to keep the price down a little bit. Uh, not 100% sure what the price is going to be on this one, but it should be coming in the first half of 2018. Now here's the big boy, and this was the thing that kind of stood out to me the most when, when I was getting the tour here. This is the EVGA Supernova 2200 P2. 2200 means this is a 2200 watt power supply. Now this means that if you're located in the United States, you cannot plug this power supply into a normal outlet. It doesn't even have the uh, normal type of plug there at the bottom because it needs to be able to support a higher uh, amount of power, higher amperage actually running through that. Uh, in fact, this power supply is laid out with a single 12 volt rail. Power chart on the side shows 183.3 amps on the 12 volt rail on this unit. It is 80 plus platinum rated. Uh, and it can deliver 2200 watts of power. Now, if you're wondering who's gonna be interested in this, uh, let's be honest, probably people who are using it for GPU mining, because practically speaking, for your typical single or two card graphics card configuration, this is way, way, way overkill. But uh, EVGA did see some increased interest over the past year in really high wattage power supplies, so they've decided to work on the 2200P2. Again, no launch date available for this one. Price is also up in the air, but I'm expecting it to be over $500, um, which it just, just, that's just how much you gotta pay for a power supply that has this much power available. I'm not sure what the length is, but it looks like it's probably around 300 millimeters. Uh, so you're probably gonna need to make sure you have a case that's large enough to fit this, if you're bothering to use a case at all. Well, let's face it, uh, GPU miners don't always bother with cases. Uh, but it's got, it's got a large 140 millimeter fan on there, and it is, of course, fully modular. Uh, big, big fat on-off switch that just, just feels really nice. And there's a quick look at the modular plugs. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can attach many, many graphics cards to this thing, and it probably wouldn't even break a sweat. What will break a sweat is probably the plug that you plug it into, because if you're in the U.S., you're going to need to plug this into a 220 uh, connection to your circuit breaker, um, such as the type of plug that you would need for maybe an oven or an air conditioner. Uh, this will draw too much power uh, to plug into a standard 120 volt plug. So do bear that in mind if you're planning on actually purchasing this power supply. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for my coverage here at the EVGA suite at the Bellagio. It's a, it's a lovely place, and I got a nice view, actually, of the Bellagio fountain going off a little while ago, which, which I thought was super nice. Uh, but guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button, of course, and a big thank you again to my sponsors for CES 2018, Deepcool, Enermax, Cooler Master, and OCZ Toshiba. Thanks again for watching, guys. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out, and we'll see you next time.